Hey everyone, I'm Mike Tugas. This is Tian Shen. We are the Capcom designers for Hexcon Sienna. So through this presentation, we hope to answer these questions for you. What is the CMM? What is the motivation for this project? What are the goals? What have we done so far? And what do we need to do? So this is a CMM. It's a fairly large machine. It has the ability to move its uh, probe head in the X, Y, and Z coordinate planes, as well as articulate this head if the proper fittings and uh, attach in the IJK uh, plane. So the exact definition of a CMM is a device for measuring the physical geometrical characteristics of an object. These are used to quality control manufactured objects or to ensure everything is within the constraints um, to micron levels. Our project is to create a 3D printer retrofit package for these CMMs that can be attached in a way that doesn't hinder any kind of movement of the machine and allows a single technician to attach this retrofit and be able to print an object using all of the mechanics that are already included with the CMM. Our best outcome for this is to provide the print head, the PCB bed, and a location to mount the filament spool on the CMM crane. Now, not pictured here would be a controller unit located next to the PCB bed that will connect to the controller computer for the CMM, and a controller located next to the print head so that it can control the extrusion rate of the device. So for the, <coughs> so for the motivation, uh, since the 3D printer was pretty similar to the CMM, so why can't we just add, uh, build a package so that it will add a value to the, uh, to the CMM machine so it can 3D print uh, on the CMM machine. So when the user can just easily take off the package, it will 3D measuring. When it's put on the package, it can 3D print. So for the hardware part, here is two things we are built up. So 3D print bed and 3D print head. So for the 3D printer bed, it's a PCB kit bed. It's a red part here and a piece of glass on top. So uh, when it's 3D printing, it will heat up to a certain temperature so the filament can stick on the heat bed. So it will prevent the whole structure moving around. For the head part, here is the things we build up. It has seven elements, including a fan. It should be here. So how it works is, as you can see, there's two holes in heat block. It will let the heat heater and thermometer uh, screwed into the hole. So it will, when, it, when we turn off power, the heater will heat up the heat block at really quickly, and at the same time, the thermometer will detect the temperature of the heat block and send that data to the Arduino. So when it reaches certain temperature, the Arduino will cut down the power of the heater, so the heat block will stay at that temperature. At the same time, the motor will start running feeding the filament, the filament coming from top, goes through here, and get, get milk as the heat block, and coming out from the muscle. Here is the wire diagram. One thing I want to say is uh, we use an uh, arena on the head and another arena on the bed. So two arena are communicating to each other through the wirelessly Bluetooth. So we can get rid of too much wiring on the hardware machine. For the software accomplishments so far, we had to start with the goal that we wanted to achieve. Since this entire project was mainly investigatory and we needed to figure out where we wanted to go with this project, we figured starting with a simple interface that the users could use without needing much direction. So we started with these small set of requirements here, easy to use, ability to input a file into the software, be able to translate the native G-code file for a 3D printer into the proprietary protocol for the CMM and communicate with the CMM over the mandatory TCP connection that in order to send any kind of communication to the device from an external source, you need to communicate through TCP IP. The file flowchart for this um, interface 
when we input a file, the user will have to create a 3D drawing model using any kind of CAD program that they want to use. Put that file through a slicer. The slicer program actually breaks down the 3D model into layers. Those layers are then converted into movements that would be interpreted by normally a 3D printer. I will take the G code that is output, put it through a translator, which is built into the interface that the user can now select the G code and say, hey, run this file. That translator will convert all the lines of code into the usable parts for the CMF. So the translator will actually parse out whether it needs to be a movement command for the CMM to move in a location, or if it needs to be an extrusion command to move to the printhead. As it stands now, we have a sample interface like this that provides the user with a way to input the IP address of the CMM, the socket they want to communicate over, initialize the CMM, and zero the CMM. There's also the ability to manually jog the machine to the location of the center of wherever they decide to mount the PCB bed. And the uh, zero will be moved to offset and all the um, printing will be done on that PCB bed. It should not walk off. We also provide the ability to browse to any file. If you wrote a file or operation script in the native PCB or in the native um, FTC protocol for the CMM, it will run that. It'll provide you every command that you have listed. It'll tell you whether that was sent or not and when it was completed based on the return values from the CMM. You can also input the G-code file and instead it will go through the translator and then the translator will pass that information through the interface and send the CMM the commands. As it stands now, we have a short little clip. Here you can see we have the extrusion working um, separately, not being controlled by the interface. And here we have the CMM actually being operated by a translated G-code file, here making a simple three-layer ring um, going point by point on an extrusion map. Our remaining technical challenges come with integrating the components so that the software can talk to the hardware Arduinos and control the um, Bluetooth communications. We need to synchronize the movement and the extrusion so that if there's an extrusion move prior to a normal move, that we do not continue to extrude because we'd end up dropping filament everywhere and it would just make a mess. And we need to find a way to install the retrofit package so that it's mounted in a way that does not hinder any movement of the machine and it's easy for our technician to install. And then we will need to test the objects that we print because part of our best outcome is to be able to print a usable object. And if we can't do that, then we didn't do what we needed to do. We would like to thank our technical director, Jonathan O'Hare. Without his guidance on this project, we would not be able to know how to even operate the machine. And our capstone director, Professor Sunak, without his inspiration for this project and organization of this entire program, none of this would have been possible. Thank you. Thank you.